All right, I want to show you guys one of the coolest things that I've seen in a long time inside of Acrobat. Uh, and this works for Acrobat 9 or Acrobat 10. A lot of you probably know that we can do multimedia. So we can add things like video, sound, Swift, 3D, all sorts of great stuff. But we can also put YouTube video or stream YouTube video into a PDF file that you send out and people look at. Now, it's going to work if people have Reader 9 or later. It's going to work better, I, you, you can say. Yeah. Um, but you're also going to be able to create it if you have Acrobat 9 or Acrobat 10. So I'm going to borrow from a blog. And let me show you guys the blog here. So once I'm in Acrobat and I open up the PDF file, let me jump over. You guys will see what's called the PDF Developer Junkie Blog. Now, Joel Geraci is the guy who does this, and he is... He's phenomenal with Acrobat and uh, working with the SDK and JavaScript and, you know, Flex and all sorts of really, really cool things. He created this widget, I guess you could say, that allows us to play YouTube content in a PDF. So the way it works is you come in here and you click on this link. It's going to download a Swift file. Now, the Swift file is somewhere you guys can keep it on your hard drive or wherever. It's not going to go with the PDF. What we're going to do is we're going to place it in there, basically you know, embed it in the PDF file. This is just kind of the container or the wrapper, the player, kind of, <laughs> the widget that's, that's going to play the, uh, the the YouTube content. So go ahead and save it somewhere. I'll click cancel. I already saved it somewhere. I'll go back over to Acrobat. In Acrobat, what you guys want to do is we now want to put that Flash video, that Swift file, into the PDF. We want to embed it in here. So I'm in Acrobat 10, and if I come over to Multimedia on the right over here, I can see Swift. You guys, if you're in Acrobat 9, you want to find how to the tool to go up and actually uh, put Swift in. I'll then click and drag to draw where it's going to go roughly. Let go. And if you look here, it's going to say, oh, well, where's the file to insert? Well, this is where we insert that Swift file that Joel created. So I'll click Browse. I'll go find it. There it is. I'll click Open. And that's pretty much all we have to do for the moment. Okay, now, like I said, it's going to go out and insert it. I'll click OK. Now, this is the difference you guys will find. It may take a few seconds here, but it's going to come up with this. It says click to activate. What you want to do is you want to click on it. And the first time you do it, since you're the one creating this, if you click on this thing, you're going to see this JavaScript window. The, the Yen user is not going to see this, okay? This is just the first time. And if you screw this up, you guys, you're probably just going to delete it and try it again, okay? Delete the actual video. So what we want to do is I want to go back over to YouTube. And whoops, that's not YouTube. Go to YouTube, find a video you like, come to the video itself, and you'll see that we have a button that's called Share. Sometimes this won't be showing by default, um, but you should be able to find it. And then we'll see Embed. I'll click Embed. And if you look, you're going to see that we have a bunch of options here. You want to make sure that Use Old Embed Code is selected. Make sure it's selected here. Copy it. You can go to Edit Copy or however you want to do it. I'll go back over to Acrobat, and I'll just put my cursor in here and paste. So control C or command C, or control V on Windows, command V on Mac. It'll just stick it all in there. Don't worry about it. You guys won't see everything. It's a lot of stuff. But we'll click OK. And there we go. There's the YouTube content. Now, there's a couple extra things you can do if you want to. We can scale it. Come over to the right over here. You're going to see we have the select object uh, tool. And if you guys are in Acrobat 9, you'll probably see it up here somewhere in the tools. If you click on the video, what we can do is we can scale it. I can come to the corner here and hold down the shift key, you guys. You want to hold down the shift key and scale it. You got to be careful of how much you do this. Um, anyway, you'll find out once you play it and see what it looks like. If you come to the video and double click on it, you can open up the Swift properties. This is where you can go to say, well, when does it play? You can say, well, as soon as the page loads or when it's clicked. You can say disable it when uh, someone closes the page or it's not visible, let's say. You can tell it to play directly in location or in situ. Uh, sorry, that's an anthropological term. Wow. Um, or you can play content in a floating window, okay, which is kind of cool. Floating window is just a little window that will pop up, and you can determine what size it's going to be. So you can make that you know, bad boy bigger if you want to. Now, you got to be careful. Um, 800 by 600, wow. you got to be careful because it's going to scale the video too. So you need to pick the right proportions or scaling for that. You can put a little border on it if you want to. And this is the big thing, you guys. If you want, you want to put a poster on it. Now, it's going to come up with, a lot of times, a kind of a white window with a little bit of text up there explaining who created it, Joel Geraci, and what it's about. 
if you guys want to put a picture in there, you can create a picture in Photoshop or another program and then say, let's make a poster. This is what people see before the, it plays. I'll go browse for a picture I created and I just made a quick play picture and I'll click OK. And you'll see it'll think about it for a couple seconds here. It'll stick it in there and it's not responding, but that's fine. There we go. All right. Now be careful of scaling it by grabbing a corner. If you guys find you screw something up, it's not the right video, whatever, whatever, just simply select it with select object, delete it, and start the process again. Okay. All right. Let me save this. I'll go to file, save as PDF, save as PDF. There we go. I'll save it on my desktop and call it done. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to close this up, close all my other stuff I've got open up here. And I've got a lot of things going on, you guys. Sorry. And I will open that up in Reader just to show you what it looks like. So I'll open it up in Reader. So this is what people are going to see. Now, I said it's got to be clicked. So when you come over here, you're going to see click to activate. If I wanted to, I could have made it where it played when the video opened, or the page opened, rather. I'll click. You notice that the, the text right there, it says YouTube widget. It's just kind of a quick stall. But that's actually really cool because it's telling you what it's about, what's going on. It's sort of like a loading type thing. I'll then click to play. Click to play. And it should take my YouTube content, bring it in, and play it. And it's not letting me play it right now, but you guys, it will work. <laughs> uh, the recording software I use sometimes won't let me do certain things while I'm recording a video. So anyway, but that will work. So there you go. I think it's probably one of the coolest things. And I just want to say thank you so much to Joel.